student Valerie Lorraine Martinez is placed on community supervision in 2022, CR 5304, for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram to four grams on December 20th, 2022, for a term of five years. Is that you? Yes. All right, state. Violated condition number four in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Valerie Lorraine Martinez did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of December 2023 and January 2024 in violation of condition number four. How do you plead to that? True or not true? Um, true. And your honor, we waive the other violation alleged in the motion. Any objection? No. Is there a proposed agreement? There is not, your honor. We are, the state is asking for revocation. I believe the defense would like to be heard. All right, defense. Judge, uh, Ms. Martinez, uh, the court has given her many opportunities that she's she's had a couple of different things in the Esperanza court. Then she was ineligible, medically ineligible for one of the treatment programs that the treatment programs just not have not worked out for her. Um, she's actually asking the court to be placed just on regular probation um, and uh, to let her go forward. She's actually got 200 days credit from all these different times that she's been in and out of jail and waiting for beds and waiting for treatment facilities. So she'd just like to be placed on regular probation and, and go forth in that way. All right, any objection to the court review and the court summary from probation? No, ma'am. No, ma no, ma Thank you. Oh, I have it. Okay. All right, so they stayed in the court summary that you were given several opportunities for treatment and to get back into compliance. Because I know with the treatment courts, if you abscond and they get you back with a certain time frame, they still want to work with you. They said they tried outpatient treatment with you, sober living with you, uh, all of the Esperanza court resources. There is nothing else that can be done for you. And if you could not follow through that program, there's no reason for me to believe that you would follow through on probation. You'll still have the same problems. It appears that you've just been running from your problems, running from treatment and continuing to use drugs. So I don't believe probation, that you're a good candidate for probation. Everything has been tried with you. I, I've been cooperating and I have been clean. No, no. no. according to this, Esperanza Court removed you from their program. Uh, I know, and I'm not taking into consideration, but I you absconded. I by three, three months outpatient rehab. I did complete the rem, remote um, recovery and motion program. I got my certificate. All right. So here's the thing. If we could all write our own program, we wouldn't be here. If you could write your own program to remain clean and sober, guess what? You wouldn't be on probation for possession one to four grams. If you could write your own program to be clean and sober, guess what? You never would have tested positive while you're on probation. You can't write your own program and that's what you're trying to do. Um, I, I'm gonna uh, grant the motion. All right, with regards to time, uh, state, what are you requesting? And defense, what are you requesting? Uh, we're looking to the uh, four years. State? Judge, we'd ask for the minimum. She has been in and out of these different programs. She has at least attempted to comply uh, on multiple occasions. Uh, so we would ask for the minimum. Yes. All right, has she paid the $114 restitution? Did you pay the restitution of $114? Um, I did make payments, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. All right. Has she successfully completed any inpatient treatment? So it looks like she was disqualified from DDRF. She was medically ineligible. Um, then the felony drug court, she was referred to the Esperanza court. And then the Esperanza court is when we started to have some problems. All right. That's what the court is going to do. The court is going to revoke you. The court will sentence you to four years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. 
There's a thousand dollar fine. Time and money will run concurrent. And I'll recommend the therapeutic community uh, for you. Uh, I can recommend it, but you will have to uh, ask for it because I have no jurisdiction to force them to place you in the therapeutic community. Did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. All right. You have a limited right to appeal. That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you are on community supervision. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. You're going to have to stop using drugs. Otherwise, the last time you use may be the last time you use. When you're released from prison, if you can't find any of the free places for drug treatment, you can always come back here. If I'm here, then I will direct you to a place where you can get treatment. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right. Uh, my understanding, counsel, is you were appointed today. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. Uh, do you need more time to prepare? Uh, no, Your Honor. I believe we're ready to proceed today. All right. And Mr. Davis, you understand that this attorney has a specific amount of time to prepare, namely 10 days to prepare for a hearing on this matter. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, knowing that, do you still wish to continue? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to show you um, what's entitled Motion to Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. You review that with your attorney. You understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Roland Davis who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2020 CR 10708 for the offense of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on April 11, 2022 for a period of five years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Honor about the 7th day of October 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Roland Davis did then and there illegally use a controlled substance namely methamphetamine, in a violation of condition number two. How do you plead with, to that, true or not true? True. State? Your Honor, we'll be waiving the rest of the allegations alleged. Any objection? Oh, no objections, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number two true. Is there an agreement? There is, Your Honor. Uh, what are you, you requesting? We ask that the uh, motion to adjudicate be um, denied, Your Honor, and that the deferred adjudication be amended to reflect and add a partial GPS for 90 days, work purposes only, monthly drug tests, MRT, and that the defendant be evaluated for DBRF. <clears throat> All right. And defense, are you in agreement with that? We are in agreement with that, Your Honor. If we could uh, just ask the uh, court for any of uh, the GPS fees to be uh, possibly deferred. Uh, Mr. Uh, Davis is going to be uh, working uh, pretty soon. And uh, until he gets back on his feet, uh, this would certainly help him out. Why is there a request for DDRF? Your Honor, it's based on the patent valuation. Okay. And so what are, how are we addressing the issue of the positive meth? It, Your Honor, it was um, it, it was a lapse in the judgment at a uh, get together that uh, he uh, attended back in October of last year. It's something he certainly regrets, and something that certainly will not be happening uh, again. And especially in light of the uh, monthly uh, drug tests uh, that will be continuing, um, this uh, this entire ordeal has cost uh, my client his. Uh, kids uh, right now are currently in foster care. He's a single father. Um, he's eager to get them back. He's eager to get on with this. I think he realizes the huge mistake that he's made in this. Where will you be working? And will I strike that? What will you be doing for employment? I know I'm a, I'm a graduate of South Texas College for decent technician. Um, there's uh, one opening for Corpus Christi. Uh, at the, I don't know how that will work with GPS. But uh, there's uh, there's an oil field out there that's willing to hire me as a private contractor, and then I'm also working with uh, reentry for things like, uh, and I'm just waiting to get to work. I'm not being picky either. Uh, 
like Stevenson's or Kiyobasa, uh, they're all within the same uh, pay rate from 18 to 21 dollars an hour. So, all right. So if you're seeking to get your children back, it may be slightly difficult to do that from Corpus Christi, but that's up for you and your attorney to decide. Who's your child protective services attorney? Uh, it is, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, that's something you should have on speed dial because it's involving your children. Yes. I when just is your next him, hearing? I just met him. Uh, the next hearing is uh, set like next year. Yeah, we're because we're 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 just getting the kids back. We're not uh, being. No, how is somebody giving you children back and you're testing positive for methamphetamine? And who is we? I mean, I, me, me, my mother. Is Let me also have you raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, you are. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Roland Davis. Now, when you say we are getting the children back, who is we? I, I have my mother, who's been a big part of here lately she came back into my life uh she has been having some medical issues like she's a quadruped that's the only reason why she didn't take the kids in right now but she's starting to move around let's call them children because kids are baby goats oh yeah so let's call it, let's refer to them as children okay all right so here's my question if you are the parent legally and your rights have been not been terminated and if you're saying we're getting the children back. The we who is getting the children back is not you and your mother. The we is just your mother, because I don't think child protective services, and I know your attorney has done child protective services cases, I believe. No, you have not. I have not. Your Honor, uh, I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. But you've been on the civil side. I have, yes. But in child protective services court, if they are giving the children back to anyone, they're not giving them back to you because you're in custody and you have a meth problem. So they're not going back to you. So it, do you have an open CPS case? Because CPS doesn't set a hearing for a year from now. A year from now is you have a year to work your service plan. And then if you, okay. unless there's good cause to extend, it doesn't get extended, it goes to trial. So what is this? I have, a, they reset my case for a year. I have a service plan. Of, uh, upon release upon release all right so your your next court date is not a year from now you need to find out when your court date is yes your honor and i can tell you right now if your children are being placed with your mom that means that you cannot live there because cps is placing your children with your mom under the assumption that you are not having contact with them because they don't want somebody who's using meth to have contact with children at sure. least unsupervised all right, this is what the court is going to do. The court will deny the motion, find violation of condition number two true, alternate main conditions to include CPS compliance. Uh, with him, I'm going to want the UA hotline until further notice. And I see where you've missed reporting. Don't miss reporting again. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to want field visits two times per month and probation, you can count the field visits as um, reporting if you want to. And I'm gonna ask for parenting classes. If Child Protective Services gives him parenting classes, then those can uh, count for the parenting classes. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. And you both are requesting so GPS. We'll do partial GPS. And that will be uh, for employment and CPS services. And we'll do an evaluation for DDDRF. Are they able to do that out of uh, custody? Yes, Your Honor. So that will be out of custody and the MRT. 
Is there anything else he needs probation? All right, so we will do that. And if um, CPS is giving him treatment, then their treatment can count. So we'll do intensive outpatient treatment through uh, probation or CPS. Uh, is there anything else, uh, probation? No, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, is, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Yeah, work, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, we can go off the record. Mr. Davis, you need to make a decision on what you wish to do with the rest of your life. If your plans are to be um, in your children's life, then you must do what needs to be done. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you're not going to... Um, be present in your children's life. Don't be that parent who flitters in, makes promises. The children think it's great. It goes great for, you know, two weeks or a month. And then next thing you know, dad is saying he's going to be someplace he's supposed to be and he doesn't show up. And it's the same thing with child protective services. They have visitation for you. I know sometimes it's not as much visitation as people want, but I've had clients before their visitation was once a month and they wouldn't even show up for that. So don't be that parent. Okay. All right, good luck to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Maybe. Sure.